Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. It's David Baer here, and today I am so, so pleased to welcome back a, a, a good friend who's moved away from the Pacific Northwest down in Dallas, Texas now, Eli Delaney, who I, I'm, I'm going to invite into the conversation in just a moment. I was gonna actually, I, I was going to jokingly say, now, how is it pronounced again? But he is actually a friend, so I'm not going <laughs> to... Screw around with any of that. Here, here's what we're we're going to talk about today. It was in a a message that Eli shared with me about some of the topics that he was interested in in, in addressing. One of the the sentences he said is, "We need to stop treating our prospects and clients as their own personal ATM and treat them like the humans they are." We've talked about this quite a bit with other folks in terms of. Human to human marketing was a was a, a phrase that uh, another guest used, and and I think that this is very very much appropriate, uh, particularly around the area of email marketing. And here's why I say particularly around email marketing, because as marketers, one of the ways that we advise people to build lists is we talk about the importance, the value of the list in terms of the numbers and the value of the list size, right? You have, you know, X number of dollars of value based on the size of your list. This is a talking point that marketers use to sell people on the idea of using email as a marketing channel. And sadly, that concept then gets translated into the way that a lot of the communication on that channel happens, right? The senders think about the recipients as a number. And hopefully by the end of our conversation today, you will be thinking a very different way. So Eli, welcome to the conversation. And I'm so, so glad to have you back. It is my pleasure to come hang out again with you, David. Um, it's always a good conversation anytime we can chat. Just um, So I'm glad to be here. And yes, I did leave Portland. I left the north Northwest, went down to Dallas area. I'm loving it down here. The one thing I'm still trying to get used to the tornado warnings. Um, you know, one thing I've never had in my entire life was had the little sirens going off. First thing that happens, I, I'm like oh, looking out the window going, are we being invaded or something? I don't know what's going on here. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And yeah, it's been, it's been a very good move for me. Love it. Great community and happy to just kind of kickstart everything that's going on. Excellent. I can, I can hear a little twang in the voice, uh, every, 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 uh, few words. So, <laughs> all right. I, I mapped out sort of this, uh, th this whole email marketing, um, positioning thing that marketers do. And I, I saw you react when I, when I brought that topic up. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm curious what was going on in your mind when I introduced that idea. So, I mean, this is something that I have been teaching and preaching for forever. And there's a couple of things we can talk about with this. You know, you, you brought up something that is a very specific thing that I'm telling people. I'm very blunt about it now, which is that we, especially in today's era, because everything in marketing has gotten so flooded and overdone that, you know, we're getting bombarded. You know, it used to be you, you get, you know, a thousand to 3000 marketing messages a day. Well, now it's probably 10,000 to 30,000 a day and people are getting to the point of tuning out. And there's a lot to do with that. And we can talk about email marketing because that's my favorite form of marketing when it comes, comes to it. Cause my, my email list is, it really is gold, but the, the misnomer with that is like you said, people talk about the money's in the list. It's not quite right. The money is not in the list. The money is in your relationship with the list. Now, I first heard that from a wonderful woman by the name of Sylvie Fortin 15, 15 plus years ago, at mm -hmm. least, probably closer to 20 years ago. And that sunk in at that point that it's not about building a bigger list, it's about using the tool as a way to communicate more effectively with the people who are interested in what we do and how we make an impact on the world. And it's, it's a mental shift 
when you think about it, because I've seen people are like, oh yeah, I've got 20,000 people on my list and we're going to have X number of clicks and we're going to make this many dollars per, per person on the list. And they're, it's like, they're looking at them, just like you said, as your personal ETM. When really the person on the other side reading that email is a human being that has a problem and they need a problem solved. And they want to know that not only can you solve their problem, but you actually care about them. And that's a big, big piece right there mm -hmm. because said and done, if two people side by side have the exact same skills and we believe that honestly, we could probably, both people could probably solve the problem that we have, we are going to choose the person that we like the best, that makes us feel confident and actually makes us feel like they care about us. That is human nature. That's yeah. just psychology. We, we've we had a lot of conversations recently. In fact, I think the, the two episodes that directly precede this one uh, about the use of stories and storytelling, mm -hmm. which as, as soon as you started talking about relationships in email or, you know, even any other mode of, of sort of one directional conversation, right? Mm -hmm. I think, well, stories are a great um, piece of it in terms of it demonstrating connection. Yeah. But I know that you have other things beyond stories and storytelling yeah. that help demonstrate um, that you care about the person on the other side. And so I wonder if you can talk a little bit about yeah. how do you demonstrate relationships and relationship building? Okay. So, and you brought up a very important point because the storytelling is like a buzzword right now is that in all your marketing, it has to be about the storytelling. The problem with that is that there's nothing wrong with it. People love stories. That's that's normal. There's nothing wrong with that. But people spend so much time focusing on telling the story that they forget about what's the point of telling the story. And I, I've had this, I had somebody approach me oh, probably like two weeks ago, I think, that was talking about they wanted, they wanted me to to coach them through and, and read through these emails that they were doing for a, a um, soap opera sequence. We've, mm -hmm. If you've been in the marketing world, you've heard that terminology, right? Uh, Andre Chaperon. Uh-huh, which is in itself, in itself as a formula, it's brilliant. And I have formulas that I use in my, in my marketing and in my templates and mm -hmm. things like that as well. We all have a formula and the formula works as it is. The problem is most people don't understand why does it actually work? And how do I take this story and build real connection with somebody? And that's where the difference lies. You have to stop and think about it. You're not telling a story. You're not writing your story into a blog post or into an email or into a social media post for the point of selling, selling a product. It is about how can I get an emotional reaction that, that makes, me, makes people understand where I'm coming from? How can I portray some knowledge to somebody, impart that knowledge on somebody else to help them on their journey? Mm -hmm. When you think of it from that standpoint is how am I using this story to help somebody as opposed to, to get them to pull out their credit card? Yeah. It shifts the attitude. And some of the things that you can do with that is number one, bring it into smaller bite-sized chunks. Remember we're in a microwave society. Everything has to be done in like 30 seconds or less or people get bored and move on. Um, but the other thing is ask for responses. One of the biggest things that I see, and this, this is a huge in the email marketing side, is people don't ask for a conversation. They are looking to tell a story and have somebody click a button so they can go buy something. Mm -hmm. But if you were to say, hey, you know what? I read this book. I thought it was really cool. This is what I liked about it. And this is how it helped my business. Here's a link, check it out. I would love to hear, what do you think about it once you've read it? By the way, it's only like 75 pages, so it'll take you no time at all. I'll read it over the weekend. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. You're getting that conversation. You're getting them to reply back. Mm -hmm. Because by asking the question, what do you think of this? People want to answer it. And now they get the feeling you actually care about what they think. And so many people miss the boat on that. Yeah. So uh, I, my gut reaction, as soon as you said, ask a question mm -hmm. and, and, and I, 
And then I realized, well, that's a stupid gut reaction was, well, that's going to require extra time because now I have to read what somebody responds to. And then I have to, I don't know, engage with them further. And then I realized, well, that's stupid because isn't that the point? Yeah, I'm like, and, and people have that. You're not the only one. That's that's a funny thing about this. People are like, oh, but I don't have time to deal with all those emails. Um, first and foremost, let me put you at ease a little bit. 98% of the people won't respond back. Yeah. But the fact that you ask the question still gives them, that still puts that imprint in their head that you actually do care which is what, that's really what we're going for here. We want that. But then the second level is, you mean you don't want to talk to your clients? You don't want to talk to people who might actually buy your stuff? That's just silly. And, and reality is that, you know, and I say this all the time, conversations lead to sales. It's, it's not, the email isn't the piece, it's the conversation. Now, sometimes that conversation isn't a us talking on a Zoom call dialogue, but sometimes it should be. I make a ton of sales from people who respond to something like that, and it starts a conversation. We jump on a call, whether it be a phone call or a Zoom, and they're like, okay, I'm not sure what I'm buying yet. Explain it to me, and how much is it? Because mm. they're ready, they're mm -hmm. sold. Mm -hmm. Because what I said and my conversation with them led them to believe, one, that I could solve the problem that they had, and two, that I actually really care about the results. I care about them succeeding with it. So at that point, they're already sold. Now we just need to determine, is it in their budget? And that's real simple. At that point, you say, this is, what, this is how it looks. This is how much it costs. There's no real sales pitch at that point. You're just having a conversation and helping them come to the conclusion that you are the person who actually cares about their results. And, and let me take a little stage left on here for just a second with this. I was having this conversation literally with a friend of mine last night that one of the best things you can do when you have a conversation with somebody is be very, very blunt about, I want you to succeed. I want you to, to take what I do and help you and grow to your wildest dreams for the very simple fact. There's a million other things I can tell you how much I want. I can't wait for you to share your message with the world and all these other things, which is become platitude because so many people say the same thing. Let's just be real about it. Yes, I want all those things. But the reality is if I help you succeed, I help you get the results you're looking for, you're going to be successful. Therefore, you're going to keep hiring me. You're going to get pay me more money to help you get more results. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting you to succeed and it's partially selfish, yeah. <laughs> but it's about how we're really having a true conversation and letting them know, I really am here to help you succeed and I care about you. That's the difference. You know, as you're talking about that, I'm thinking, and, and you know, our business and our business model mm -hmm. uh, is very much that right we have built a business around um almost building the relationship mm -hmm. with our business and our clients businesses going forward together from the point that they say yes yeah and so so yes i think uh you know i i love the idea of having that perspective that you build the relationship in your marketing and uh, and selling communications because what you're really doing is it's it's the you know the the flirtation before the first date and the first date is the you know bring you in, mm -hmm. into the uh deeper you know dating relationship which leads to the marriage which leads to an and if you think about I'm building toward a continuation of relationship mm -hmm. let's got to start with relationship yeah, that's and that is exactly it. You know, one of the things that I say is most of the time out there, friends won't become clients because, I mean, we all know we have the friends and they always want a discount because they're our friends, mm -hmm. family and friend discount, right? Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening, if you run, if you play this game right, what ends up happening is your best clients become your best friends. And that should be the goal. I have a client, you know, as of the time we're recording this, a friend of mine 
is a client of mine. He's been a client of mine for a little over a year. He is in New York Times or um, in New York Times Square launching his book as we speak. Like I saw the picture he's got up on one of the big jumbotron things, mm-hmm. a picture of his book and everything is up there. I have seen him through this entire journey. I've helped him with behind the scenes stuff. He and I have sat down and had great meals together. We've had great conversations. We know things about each other's personal lives that most friends don't even know because we've gotten to become that good of friends. Mm -hmm. But we did that because from the very beginning, I came at it as a relationship that did have a monetary exchange, but my relationship, a relationship should always be how can I make your life better and you make my life better? And so that's where we have that one plus one equals three phenomenon. Yeah. And, it, and that, that comes from every type of relationship. It doesn't matter if it's a, a personal relationship, a, a spouse, good friends, everything. It sh- that should always be the case. And in your business world, that's where people a lot of times forget they think of it as different. And it's like, no, it should be a, a one plus one equals three, no matter where we are. Me being part of your life makes your life better. And you being part of your, my life makes my life better. So we both grow at the same time. And that becomes an interconnected relationship that can supersede anything. And the greatest thing is that those clients, you treat clients like that and you help them get there and get those wins they will become raving fans. They'll keep paying you money forever. Like they'll, I have one person who literally forgets to show up on the calls that we have for our group coaching calls. And she's like, this is my donation to Eli fund every month. One of these days I'll finally get back to coming in, but I just love you. You're, I, I know you're there for me when I need you. And I know mm-hmm. it's going to be worth it. I'm getting my money's worth. I just haven't got it this month. It'll come back next month. You know, I mean, that's a cool place to be. It's like, obviously you want your clients to show up and always be there. Yeah. But when they're willing to pay you because they know that it, they're they're building up a credit and they know when they jump on that call that it's going to get burned right away because they get so much value out of that, that's an amazing place to be. But it's all about the relationship you have with them. That's where the key comes in. Gosh, I, I, I love that um, imagery of that client who's been paying you, who actually tells you, right? Uh, I, I, I will be there because I know you're always there for me. I have plenty of those clients who don't show up and I don't get the communication. Clearly we have to do something about those relationships, uh, to, to improve, you know, that, that communication and that perspective. So, um, thank you. Thank you for that. (laughs) You know, and here's a simple thing and everybody should be doing this. This is the, I tell people all the time, um, is like, if you want to make better relationships and you want to get better results and you want clients to give you more money, pick five a week. Pick up the phone, just call them and say, hey, I just want to check and see how you're doing. Just no sale, no pitch. Yep. You can do that with prospects. Pick five more that you communicate with on Facebook and just shoot them a quick little message. Hey, it's been a while. Just want to check in. How you doing? You would be shocked at how powerful that is. And I actually have an email script that I've given out to people that basically is like, here, send this email out. It's like, hey, I haven't talked to you for a while. And by the way, and I don't know if I shared this last time or not, but I'll share it here. The subject line is, I'm such a slacker. Okay, If you haven't stayed in touch with the people that, that are on your list, use yeah. this. Just to say, subject line, I'm such a slacker. And he's like, I have not stayed in touch with you the way I should. I promise to do better this year. I apologize for the way I've been. I'm going to do better. And I'm starting with this. I would love to check in. I just want to check in, see how you're doing. What have you been up to? What's new and exciting? And then sign it. There's no pitch. There's no, hey, by the way, get a 10, 10% discount or any of the kind of BS. Just send them an email saying, hey, I dropped the ball. I'm sorry. I would love to hear what you've been up to. I literally had a client do that. And she sends it on Monday. Now we had a three email campaign for this. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a plan for two more just to check in. Did you get my email type of things? Right. Um, she sends this email on Monday. On Tuesday morning, I get an email from her. I wake up to this email saying, how do we stop the campaign? We need to stop the other emails from going out. I'm like, I, I just pick up the phone. I'm like, what's wrong? What, what, what happened? She goes, everybody replied. Like, what do you mean? Everybody replied. Everybody replied. Lo and behold, I look at her calendar. She is booked solid for the rest of the month. She ended up literally with one email 
making $12,000 in sales by the end of the week yeah. and not selling anything from that email. All she did was just check in with people. And these people kept replying back, oh, thank you so much. I've actually been meaning to talk to you. And I keep getting busy and keep forgetting. I mean, it really is that simple, guys. <laughs> it really is. It, it reminds me of the the section in the um in the Jeff Walker book where he talks to the I don't know the other parent on the sideline of the kids mm-hmm. soccer game mm-hmm. and I don't remember exactly how the story goes but he he says something about I think they're talking about paying for college and he says to the other parents uh, you know oh I, we haven't you know saved for for college um because I know when it's time to pay for college all I need to do is send an email and mm-hmm. You know, again, that goes back to the the point I was making earlier, which is that we have in our heads there's a there's a monetary value mm-hmm. to that list, right. but you've now just um, humanized it with mm-hmm. that that story that you told. Thank you, and that's that is it. We need to humanize this. We need to go realize the people that are following us on social media, the people that are on our email list. The people who connect with us in all the different places, the people, the audience of, of a speaking engagement, you know, in, in coming up soon, I'm going to be doing a paid speaking engagement for, for an organization. They're expecting three to 500 people there. Um, I'm not looking at, and then this is like the speaking world is one of the things that's like a pet peeve of mine where, you know, when a, when a speaker talks about going into an event, how many buying units are in the room? That just makes me like nauseous when I hear that term. It's like, no, these are real people. Now I understand their buying units mean a person who will buy, meaning if there are 500 people in the room, but they're all couples, that's 250 buying units. I understand the math that's going through their head, yeah. but using the terminology, how many buying units, it's just icky. And it makes you feel it like makes it feel like you don't care about them being human beings, people that want to talk to you and want to hear your story and and that you could say something that might actually change their life today. Again, you're going back to using them yeah. as an ATM. It's like, hey, um, nice to meet you. You know, spit out your spit out your credit card for me. You know, no, that's not how it works. That's not how relationships work. They never should be. You know, we live in a transactional society, but that doesn't mean we, we're ruining the, they're taking out the human factor with it. We are still people yeah. and people need to know that you care about them. You know, even, even in the smallest aspects, they want to know that not only can you do the job, but you actually care about the job and how it makes them feel. So uh, I think, I think we've got the, not the theory, but the concept, the idea, and now I, I want to shift a little bit to, and you gave, you know, one example of a campaign, mm-hmm. uh, practical implementation, right? The, the, okay. yeah. so I, I gave you one piece of resistance uh, a moment ago, which was, you know, <laughs> oh, I don't want, I don't want to send that out because then people, then I, then I have that extra time that I have to mm-hmm. waste, invest, I don't know, in, um in, in, you know, communicating with people. That was, you know, it uh, not well thought out, and 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 you know, I I realized the error of my ways pretty quickly after I, that initial thought. That's good. You understand. You get it. <laughs> but, we're we're converting you here. <laughs> but but now we have this challenge of okay, this all sounds great, Eli, but how do I actually like you know systematize this? How how do I make this part of my routine? I I haven't naturally done this in the way that I've communicated in business. Right. Uh, you're now telling me, you know, I got to flip a switch and do something differently. That's hard. How, yeah, how, it how, is. how, do, how do you get, get started and, and okay. what sort of things might you, uh, um, yeah, recommend? it's real, real simple stuff. Uh, first and foremost, uh, everybody listening here, you know, David, you know what his business does. Um, if you don't know me, you now know me and you're going to hear that my business does a lot of the same kind of stuff in a high level standpoint. We all recommend using a CRM system. Okay. Customer relationship manager is what that stands for. The reality is it's a database that stores all your people and keeps track of all the conversations because we are human. We will drop the ball. We will forget stuff. That's just a, that's just human nature. It's just a fact. So start with having a true CRM system of some sort and put your conversations in there. Take notes when you're talking to somebody and then put them in there. So the next time you go talk to them, you can just skim through them and make sure you didn't forget something. But simple things like, 
creating a task for yourself that in six, eight weeks, task pops in just as check back in with them. You could even have a pre-written script that all you have to do is just hit a button or it can do it automatically if you really want to do the automation route, which I do a lot, and have an, a script go out, just an email that says, hey there, just been a while since we talked, just want to check in, see how you're doing. That's it. Nothing complicated. You could do it as a text if you want to. I have literally have reminders for myself that says, go to Facebook Messenger and just say hi to, hi to David, check in with him. And so this task pops up with a link to our Facebook message. And I just click the link. It opens a Facebook Messenger for me. I just like, hey, David, what's been up? Haven't talked for a while. How much time does that take? 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Dedicate 30 minutes a day to that. You will blow away 90 to 95% of the people out there with your follow-up. If you could just dedicate a half an hour a day to just those kind of messages. Or here's another great one. One of my favorite things in the world. You know, we, we have these silly little phone things with us all the time. They don't, we don't use them for phones. We use them for fa surfing Facebook and watching cat videos. So here's something cool you can use with it. We already have Facebook on there, right? You have Facebook on your phone. You're already scrolling. You see people's birthdays. Don't send them a message on their wall with the 5,000 other people for the birthday card that nobody can ever get to. Click on the messenger, send them a quick little video. Little video it says, hey there. Hey, David, Facebook told me it was your birthday today. It's been a while and I just want to pop in and say happy birthday. Hope you're having a great day. We should definitely catch up some, sometime soon. I'll literally do that while I'm in the drive through of a Dutch Brothers getting my morning mocha. Okay. I, I kind of feel like I have gotten, and it, I don't think it was birthday, but some sort of like ad uh -huh. hoc video from you at some point. Oh yeah. You got, yeah. you got birthdays. I, I know. I remember I have, I have done them and I can do 10 of those, which not every day do I have 10 birthdays that I'm going to follow up with. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I can do those literally while I'm sitting in line at my Dutch brothers, which by the way, going back to the fact that I moved from Portland, which is where, you know, Oregon is where Dutch brothers came from. One of the, one of the reasons why I got the place that I'm living in right now is because I'm three minutes from a Dutch brothers, which is so amingly hot. <laughs> um, yeah, it was total sales and they love me. Um, they, they get a lot of money from me. Yeah. Um, but it, that's a little simple thing. You're standing in line doing nothing anyway. Or you're sitting in the drive through doing nothing anyway. Go go to Facebook. Go to Facebook, do search, and then search birthdays. It's going to pop up. It's going to tell you everybody's birthdays for the day. And just go through back to back. If you do a one-minute video, which doesn't have to be that long. They used to have a 30-second 30, 30 limit. So it's like, you know, hey, David, Facebook told me it was your birthday today. It's been a while. I just want to say happy birthday. Hopefully you're having a great week. Let's catch up sometime in the next week or two. Talk to you later. Have a great birthday. So uh, I, I hear already because I have clients who do this to me all the time, mm -hmm. people sitting here listening to you and saying, oh, but I left Facebook. I can't stand that platform. I guess I can't do this. Or I don't want to you know, reach out to somebody on their birthday. What else can I reach out to them and make a video about? And you, you know, I, I'm going to guess you're going to say, well, you're not out of luck because there's a dozen or three dozen or eight dozen other ways that you can use the same approach. Right. You could use the same thing for a ton of different ways. First and foremost, um, even if you don't like Facebook, your clients are there. Okay. There's a ton of people that are still there. You're, you're missing the boat if you're just walking away from it. I understand the reasons why, but the reality is you want to make more money. You don't have to fall into the, the suckiness of the things in any platform. There's a lot of negative and positive stuff. Focus on the positive, ignore the negative, and just move on. This one thing, if you go back to Facebook and do just this one thing, people will be shocked and amazed. Okay, They will be happy and very excited about that. But this is just one possibility. If you see, you know, if somebody posts, here's another great thing, any platform, somebody posts a question, okay? This is one of the things I've gotten. I've got, I got an amazing client out of actually doing this one time. Somebody posts, hey, have you heard of this software platform? It's a big CRM out there that we've all heard of. Um, I'm thinking about moving over to it and I would love to know people's thoughts. Of 
course, a bunch of people said it's horrible, it's overpriced, blah, 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 blah. A um, bunch of other people said it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm a partner and I'm going to give you a great deal on it. Um, and nobody really gave them any content. Mm-hmm. So I stop and I said, I spent like five minutes. It's not long, five minutes, but I wrote, by the way, I've been using this platform since 2007. This is what I like about it. This is what I don't like about it. Uh, here's what it does for me. Here's what you need to know, whether you work with us or anybody else. Here's the things I recommend that you keep in plan, in mind before you give them any money. One, two, three. Hopefully this is helpful. If there's any other questions you have, feel free to message me. We'll jump on a Zoom and I'm happy to help you out. Okay. So I spent maybe five minutes writing this out yeah. and I shared it. About a week later, this guy bumps me in my in my direct messages and says, hey, Eli, I want to, first off, I don't know if you remember, but you commented on my, my question about the software. And I wanted to first off tell you, thank you so much. Out of 120 comments, yours was the only one that actually answered the question. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. I'm wondering if you'd still be open to doing that call with me. I was like, yeah, sure. Here's a, here's a link to book on my calendar. We end up getting on a call, call on the calendar. He ends up becoming a client right then and there. We signed him up. So we got commissions on that software. And he was a client for like six years. Hmm. And the only reason he's not still a client is because I'm, I'm not doing that service anymore. Hmm. But all I did was spend five minutes truly trying to help. And not pitch him anything. I didn't pitch him anything. I said, you know, if you need help, if you need help, I'm here for you. Uh, if you got questions, let's just jump on a call. I'm happy to answer them for you. I, the sales quest, the, the sales conversation didn't happen until after I even answered all of his other questions when we jumped on the Zoom. And then he says, "And do you do this as a service? Can you help me?" I'm like, "Well, bye. Yes, we can." I and yeah. yeah. And he paid us monthly every single month for like six or seven years. I don't remember the exact time frame, mm-hmm. but it was a long time purely because I just, I spent five minutes, five minutes out of my busy day to just truly help him. Look at Facebook, look at LinkedIn, look at the other social platforms that are out there and see when people are asking questions and you have the answer. Spend just a couple of minutes and give them a true thought out answer, a thought out response, as opposed to just yes or no. Yes or no, a lot of times is not really the answer people are looking for. You know, the, what you're describing here has some additional residual benefits, obviously, because you're doing these things in public. Yes. And while on social platforms, um, you know, for the most part, that stuff goes away pretty quickly. Uh, dis- disappears from from view. I'm thinking of platforms like Quora, mm-hmm. where this is actually uh, a way that that some people market themselves just mm-hmm. by answering other people's questions in yeah. a um, thoughtful and thorough manner. Yeah, if over that's, and over if and over works, again, right? Yeah, if that, yeah. that works for you, use it. I don't use Quora myself, but that's that's a great platform for it. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to get out there and add value. The kicker is that we are we are here to help people. Okay? Yep. I don't care what kind of business you're in, you are here to help people. Whatever mm-hmm. way that looks is purely up to your individual niche. But the idea is if we can get out there and we can just share some value and we're not talking, you know, you have to spend two hours a day doing this. No, spend 20 minutes. I mean, like I said, I'm in the drive through Starbucks doing little Facebook videos for people. Um, you know, if I have a couple minutes here or there, I'm on my phone, I'm looking and I'm, I'm searching. What kind of questions do people have? Where are people getting stuck on things? And sometimes it's stuff that I, I know the answer to has nothing to do with my business. I get that a ton. Yeah. And there's like, it's something that I just happen to know a lot about. So I'll spend that two or three minutes, maybe five minutes writing something that's thoughtful. That's truly got some meat to it. And next thing I know, they're like, so w- now what exactly is it you actually do? Because I sell this stuff over here. That seems really interesting. Can, can you tell me more about that? Hmm. Well, yeah, of course I can. Again, we're going to have a conversation. Conversations lead to sales. You know, it's just about having a conversation and showing value. 
and, and impacting the world in a positive way, you know? So I, I think that that's a, a great segue to share how folks who have been listening to our conversation might have a conversation with you, which may or may not lead to a sale, yeah. but might help uh, impact them in a positive way or impact you in a positive way. Definitely. I love that. You know, anybody who's watching the video version of this right above my head, it says meet cool people that is there for a very specific reason. That is kind of my, my mantra. I love to meet cool people. I love to have cool conversations. Um, the easiest way for people to connect with me is literally go to connect with Eli or connect to Eli.com. And it's E L Y. Okay. Connect do you, to Eli.com. Do, do you have both URLs? I have connect with Eli. Is it? Am I like spacey today? I, I think you are. Yeah. And we didn't talk about the fact that I'm actually fighting a really nasty cold. So you probably heard it a little bit, but I am a little bit spacey. So connect with Eli. Sorry about that. Connect with Eli.com. I think that's probably the first time in my entire life that I've messed that up. And I've been using that since like early, the late 2018 is when I started using that. Yeah. Um, but Connect with Eli.com, easiest way to get a hold of me. All my social media links are there. Connect with me there. But if you connect with me, shoot me a message and say, hey, I heard you on the show with David. I'd love to connect with you. There's a spot on there. You can even book on my calendar. Let's have a cool chat. If I can help you in any way, I'm, I'm here for it. I enjoy these kind of conversations. If it leads to sales, great, but that's not what it's about. It's about how can we have a cool conversation? How can I see if there is a way that I can add value regardless of whether you become a client or not? That has nothing to do with it. If that happens to be the way, great. But that's like 10% of the conversations I have lead to people becoming clients. The other 90% lead to me pointing them in the direction of people that I'm connected to that can help them out because I love doing that kind of stuff. So I'd be happy to have a conversation with anybody. Um, and it is connectwitheli.com. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm glad that we straightened that out. I uh, yes. I um, am so happy that uh, you, you had an opportunity to come back and join me again. And we'll probably come up with another uh, great topic for yet another conversation uh, on the podcast at some point in the, uh, in the future. Definitely. Thank you, my friend. It is my pleasure to be here. Always a good conversation. Um, yeah, indeed. And it's, it was a good chance to catch up after I got moved here because we haven't talked since I moved and that was quite a while ago. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, we have messaged on social media, but I'm glad yeah. that uh, this this brought us here uh, to, to, to chat again today. Yeah. Folks, this has been More Perfect Marketing. If you know somebody who could benefit from listening to the conversation you just heard, and I'm pretty sure you do, please share it with them. In the meantime, my name is David Bear. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.